In our last episode, Franny shows you how to bypass the engine and hotwire the windlass. During this next episode, we make the hot wire a permanent addition by adding in a switch. Franny will also show you how to operate the windlass in an emergency situation when there is no power at all. The inspiration for this electrical project came from the SV8 website. Robert has a lot of stuff on there, all sorts of updates for a Sayona 47, but it can apply to a lot of different things actually. Great site, and he's so generous to put all of that information up for us. I'll go ahead and link it down below so you can check it out. It's really a, it's really a great site. And follow him on Instagram as well. He always posts lots of great pictures of his travels, he and his wife, with a, in their Sayona 47. Now that we know that we can operate the windlass electrically without the engine running, just by jumpering those two connections, I want to add a switch to the box that I can just sort of hit it, boom, we're ready to go. In case there's any problems with the port engine, I don't want to be locked out of the windlass again. This is our windlass control box, so that's where we're going to be working. And it's this relay over here on the side that we really want to get after. So let me go ahead and pull this guy out. Now remember, all of this stuff is live, so be careful about that. So we pulled out our relay here. We're gonna be connecting this terminal here to power. So this power connection here will connect to this side of the relay. This is pin number 85, I believe. You wanna make sure one side is grounded. That's this side. These are the two coil connections. This is the power side, and this only gets energized when the engine's actually running. So we can hear the relay click, do a little click. That way we know we've got the right terminal. The switch I'm gonna be wiring up is this guy here. It's got a little light on it, which is kinda of cool, so that when it's on, it'll be green. That'll mean that we've bypassed the engine, and when it's off, then the engine must be on and I'll leave it in that position all the time just because that's the safest. You don't really want to want run the windlass without the engine and just on the batteries if you can help it. If the engine can be running, that's the optimal way to do it. And it's just simple spade connectors on the back, nothing really fancy. And we need to connect to this red wire here and, and up to there through the switch. And then we need to find a ground for the switch as well because we need to power the little light that's on it. So we'll have to find that as well. And I think actually the other side of this is gonna work really well for that. So I have a connector that looks like this. It's kind of nice. It's got an extra tab on it so we can hook two things to it. So I can plug this guy in and then take our red wire and plug that in as well. Now these aren't exactly marine grade components here. I am gonna put a little bit of shrink wrap over it that'll seal these things, but I'm not too worried about it because it lives inside this box and the box is sealed. So it's not going to see any type of like external anything on it. And none of these really are sealed either. In fact, nothing on here seems very sealed. I think it'll be fine. I do have marine grade tinned wire that I'm going to use for this. So I'm going to use the correct wire for this as well. And this is fairly large gauge. It's just the coil on the relay. It takes almost no power at all. So this will be plenty big. There's a little diagram here, wiring diagram on the switch itself. There's two terminals on this side. They're just a switch terminal, but one of them does take power to power this little light. And you can see from this that when this switch is closed and the two of these are connected together, we have the power through to the LED and then to ground, which is this guy over here. So we wanna put power into the center one so that when we turn it on, we connect to the outer one across the ground here on this side for the light. So this is gonna be our power. So this is gonna be coming from the power bus that's in there, plugged into here. This one will be out to the relay and this one will be to ground. Since we're hooking up the positive, I'm gonna use red. That just works for me. Now we don't have too far to go. We're just gonna go from the switch, which will be on the actual front of this panel, just to the connections inside there. So we don't need a ton of wire, six or eight inches at the most. All right, so this is tinned wire. So hopefully this won't corrode in a marine environment. I'm sure I'll be using this wire in other places that may be exposed to a little bit of salt water. So I just wanna make sure they use the correct wire. So the connector on one side of this, and just crimp that guy on. There we go, nice and tight. Give it a good tug, make sure it's gonna stay put. And on this side, we need a ring to go on the power terminal that's in there. I do wanna give myself a little extra wire just because now we're tying something to the front of this panel. And I don't want it so tight that you can only pull the panel off just a little bit, or you have to pull all the connectors off and then you don't know where everything went. So that's why I'm giving a decent amount of wire. You'll be able to move this out of the way if you ever need to get into that box. Go ahead and crimp this guy. 
Now, a quick little thing about crimping. I've done a lot of this sort of wiring in cars and things, and I see a lot of people use just interesting crimping methods. If you look on the crimper here, we've got actually three different places we can crimp to. And it says here on the top one here, it says insulation only. And then these are supposed to be for not insulated. And the reason is that this can poke through the insulation. I get that. But if you use this crimp right here, I find that those will pull off. You're just sort of clamping on top of it and they'll pull off. So I always use the one here that has the bump in it. And I also look at where the splices in the connector itself so they've they've actually this thing was flat and they just rolled it up so there's just a slot right through here where the two come together and i want to make sure that my bumpy bit on my crimper is on the other side so i don't want to put the hardcore point of this crimper where these two are seamed together i want to make sure it's on the back side so putting that all together we throw our wire in like that and i spin it around and i put it on like this i make sure i'm right up as far to the edge of the insulation as I can. And then I just clamp down, there we go. And it puts a nice indent on the back. It didn't break that insulator anyways. It didn't on this side either. These are now really on there and they're not gonna slide off. It seems like every time I see a connector slide off, I can tell that they've used this first position here and it just doesn't hold, never does. But the little guy with a, with a bump on it there that kind of hits it in the back of the spine and just locks it in, always works. All right, so that's that wire. We're all set there. So just so I don't get things confused, looking at our diagram here again, this is the wire that comes from power, 12 volts all the time. It's going to go here on this center terminal. As it says here on the diagram, that's just where the positive goes. Now we can throw a multimeter on that and check it, but I'm sure the wiring diagram's fine. It's this one that goes from here will go to the actual relay. So let's go ahead and build that one. That's gonna be two spade connectors on another piece of wire about the same length. And also red, I'm gonna use red because we're still doing power. All right, this one just has a simple spade connector on it, easy enough. Once again, I'm gonna crimp like I did before with the bumpy one right in the back and lock that guy down. Now for the other side of this, we're gonna be using this guy because we need to be able to connect to the relay and leave a post open for the connector that's already on the relay. So we're going to use one of these guys. Fancy dancy. It's kind of nice. That's just a great way to double up one single connection. Let's go ahead and crimp this guy down. Make sure our wire's all the way in there. All right. All right. Those look pretty good, huh? Now this wire is the output of the switch and goes to the relay. So our connector here goes to the outside terminal on this side. This is gonna to go to our relay, this goes to power. And then we've gotta find a ground here for this guy. And looking at our relay here, that's our red wire. That's the one we're going to be adding power to. The other side must be a ground. It kinda of has to be a ground. If it's not a ground, then the relay won't work. So I'll bet we can just hook up to this side, just like we're hooking up to this side, and we should be able to power our light just fine. But let's test that first. Okay, we can hook up our red wire here to the relay. This guy goes on like that. Yeah, there we go. Then we'll hook our other red wire. This one's from the engine, so we'll hook that guy back up again. All right, we're hooked up here. This guy is just going to go up to this ring like that. And then when we turn on the switch, and the switch is on, we can hear the relay going. When the switch is off, it's not going. So that's the way it works. So let's see if we can hook this terminal to the other side and get our little light to turn on. I'll just use a quick little jumper cable for that just to verify that that's actually gonna work. That guy, and then it goes around here to the other side, which is right here, this blue wire. Oh, it's a little loose in there too, probably not a good thing. All right, okay, so we're all set here. Okay, light is not on. Turn this on, the light's on, and we are on. So that's exactly what we wanna do. That's perfect, that's just what I'm looking to do. We turn it off, and the windlass will run only when the engine's on. Turn this on and now it will run without the engine. But we want that green light so we can see what's going on. Perfect, turn that off, just connect this. All right, so we're gonna be creating another connector just like the one that we did on this side, the double, and we're gonna hook it to here and we're going to connect to the other side of the coil. And that one I'm gonna do in black because it's kind of a ground. We'll use black wire, there we go, nice and tight. And we just need a simple spade for the switch on the other side, there we go, all right. So this connects to our switch here, and this will connect to the other side, this guy here, this one here. So we'll go ahead and crimp these down just a smidgen to kind of tighten them up just a little bit. Certainly don't want that falling off. There we go, that's on there a lot, a lot tighter. That's great. Well, it looks a little nutty, but I think it's gonna work for us. There we go, our green light is on, and there we go. Okay, I think we're good. 
Well, at this point, all we need to do is to hook our power wire up, which we'll do absolutely last. But I need to mark a hole in our cover here and put the switch in. I should probably take a good look at where things are inside here. I don't want any collisions. In fact, at this point, I suppose we can put our relay back in. We're all wired up, so that'll give us a good idea where things go, this little guy. So where we're going to want to put our switch is right about here-ish on the cover. All right, let's go ahead and lock that guy in. All right, that's the relay in. We have a fuse here that's just sort of floating around back here, so I think it'll be fine. But our cover, we're going to end up with our switch right about here-ish, I think, on our cover. So I think this is probably a good spot for it. Looking at the panel here, it looks like it's probably at the end of this windless somewhere in here i think is where we're going to want to be yep i think that's fine We've got plenty of room to move around and then as far as height goes just below the windlass okay well that's what we'll do let me go ahead and get this i'm going to have to cut a hole in this panel and put this thing through so i'll just measure it cut it very carefully there's almost no lip on this thing so there's not a lot of room to screw that up but there is a gasket so i can use the gasket probably to use it as a template so i won't bore you with that let me go ahead and cut that hole and i'll be back in just a sec i've got my hole cut out in the plate now this is a kind of a difficult hole to cut out because it's so square and has a little little knobby bits on the corners and stuff it's a little bit difficult but i'm pretty certain our little switch is going to go in so let's go ahead and pop it in hook up our wires and we should pretty much be there all right so we want to hook this up so that the light is up that so that when we're here and we're working we know that that will be on and that will be off we want to remember there's a little rubber gasket here we want to make sure we get that on there pretty certain this will go in all the way home there it goes boom all right looks like it was supposed to be there huh that looks really good we can hook up the rest of our wires i just had them sort of up and out of the way here our black one goes here and our red one goes here and you can see we've got plenty of extra wire here so that if you do need to take this cover off you're, you're going to be good the last thing we need to do is hook up to power there so let's go ahead and take that little nut off and we'll go ahead and hook up our ring clip here Okay, there we go. We're all wired up here. Let's make sure our switch works. There we go. I could hear the relay click. But you know what? Let's go test it. We'll leave it off and go see if the windlass works. We'll come back, turn it on, make sure the windlass does work, and we'll know if our switch works. Okay, so we're going to leave it off. Let's go check the windlass real quick like Bunny. Here's our windlass control. Let's see if it'll go down. Not at all. See if it'll go up. Not at all. Now we expected this because our switch is off. Let's go turn our switch on and see how that works. We'll turn our switch on. Well, green light is on. Great. Let's go see if the windlass works. Okay, moment of truth here. We'll just tap it just, just down a tad. There it goes. All right, look at that. So our windlass is working great. All right, well, that was a successful test. Let's go ahead and put our plate back up and finish the job. All right, I'm really happy with that. That's awesome. We'll turn this off at our plate. Doesn't that look sharp? On, off. Woohoo! But what if you don't have any power at all? Let's say you had some malfunction, the actual motor burns up on the windlass, or you just don't have any battery power at all. How do you operate the windlass? It is still possible. There is a manual option to this thing. On the top of the winch, we have a place we can insert an actual winch handle here. Now this is very, very tight. The whole assembly here has been clamped down very tightly so that it actually works properly with the electric motor. But this is what we do to disconnect it. We loosen this up like that. Oh, and you can see the chain starting to move and you can see the gypsy moving. Now at this point, you can sort of clutch this thing a little bit by the pressure you put with this winch handle. So if you loosen it up enough, down it goes and then it'll continue on down and then we can tighten it off here. So that's the process actually. So you get down here, you'd insert your winch handle, you'd loosen this thing up and down goes your anchor. And then you can throttle a little bit with the with your winch handle. And as soon as you've deployed enough of the, the road that you need, 
need and you're, you feel good about it, you can clamp this back off and you're good to go. Your anchor has been deployed. And I know what your next question is gonna be, okay, that's super awesome, but how do we get the anchor back up? And that's a little bit different. I'll show you what we need to do for that. To manually raise the anchor, our first step is gonna be to pull this little cover back here. And remember this catch that we cleaned up on the last video. We need to pull this little plastic piece out like that and slide this over so that our cam here can lock into the, the pawns inside the gypsy there. And what that's gonna do for us is with this good and loose, the, the chain won't be, won't, won't go out any further because of this. So this is gonna lock our chain so that we can retrieve it. Okay, so we've got this set. That's our first step we need to do. We'll leave that guy out like that. All right, our next step is gonna be, believe it or not, to take this completely off. I know this sounds funny. We'll take our huge gland nut off and we can set that aside and we're gonna actually pull the capstan up. This is the reason why we wanna lock the gypsy first because with all of this assembly loose, it can just pay out as much chain as it wants at this point and it's kind of crazy. The only thing that's keeping the gypsy from rotating is this, this little pawn here that's stuck inside the notch. So that's the way that works. All right, great. You see these three holes here? These are for bolts. This is the emergency lift kit for the windlass. Now I keep this actually in the nav desk. So if there is an emergency, I know exactly where to get it. I could leave it in here, but this is a bit of a rough area. And I suppose if you had it tucked away somewhere and you knew exactly where it was and was up out of the way, that would be great. Just keep it somewhere where you know what it'll be when you need it in an emergency. This is our emergency kit. This ring is what we're gonna put over the top of our gypsy. And it comes with the three cap bolts that we need. And then I added an Allen to the kit so that I've got something I'm not fussing around trying to find this. One quick maintenance item, when you're cleaning off your gypsy and you're doing all your maintenance on this, throw a little bit of Corrosion X in each one of these holes. There we go. They can get pretty schmutzy and uh, with a lot of calcium in them and it makes it very difficult to drive the screws into them. Now, before you start, you'll want to run these screws in to make sure that they're gonna go in and they're gonna work properly. Cause they're a little tight, these. They just feel a little tight. Just go around and run each one of the screws in a bit. All right, just to make sure that they're gonna, they're gonna go in without a fuss. There we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this ring onto the top of the gypsy with our three cap bolts. So you just wanna line it up. The holes are very interesting the way they've placed them. So you just line it up so that they're in the right spots. Throw your cap bolts in. One, two, three. Get all three of them started before you tighten them down. Remembering that this is a piece of plastic, but you do want these seated. Okay, all right. Make sure your ring is not loose. And now we have a way to use our winch handle on the top of the gypsy. We have our catch set on the side of it. So now we can ratchet this thing up. So you set your winch handle here. It's kind of have to figure out about where the best place for it is. That gives you probably the most leverage. And then you can rotate this around and pull the anchor back up. There we go. And we can see on the side here, we can see our pawn moving back and forth. See how that, how that's working. If the pawn wasn't there, this would want to unravel. And that would be bad. So we can see that it, it holds and won't let the chain go down any further. There, so if we need to take a break, we can. So we just pull our chain up, pull our anchor back up. There we go. And the anchor is where it needs to be. We just take off our winch handle. We're gonna remove our little donut here on the top. All right, just like that. So the screws aside. We can reassemble our capstan at this point. Put that back on the top. Great. Put our big gland nut back on. Okay, there we go, huh? And before you get this thing completely tight, we need to replace our pawn here. We need a little more slack on the chain. We do have our chain lock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install my chain lock here and I'm gonna pull down on this a bit. I'm gonna cinch it up and take the pressure off of the chain and cinch it down. Now that we have our chain locked off and secured, the next step is gonna to be to release this paw. Now, it's kind of difficult to get off, and if you put some pressure on the back of this thing, it's awfully difficult to get it to move, but you can use a screwdriver here and just pop it out, boom, just like that, all right? With our pawn released, we can use our finger to hold it out a little bit, and then we move this tab 
forward so that it catches, and then the little plastic bit goes in there to lock it down. And we are all set. All right, with our paw secured, we can then tighten this back up. There we go, good and tight. And we can remove our winch handle. Now, one thing about the winch handle I wanna mention is that we got a smaller one. And the reason is, you can see here, that we needed a smaller one or it will literally contact this. And that causes a big fuss when you're trying to move this thing around and around and around. So if you have a similar installation where you've got some type of impediment here to your winch handle, I suggest you get a smaller one and just keep it in the locker here so you're set with all the tools you need, ready to rock and roll if you have an emergency. And that's it. The windlass has been returned back to service. It's ready to go. It, as soon as you get your electric restored, you're good to go on this thing. That is how you operate a windlass manually if you have zero power or your electric motor is burned up or for whatever reason, you can't use the electric bit to actually spin the motor. Well, I hope this was helpful. We've actually had both of these issues. We had the engine cutout issue when we were in Key West. And then when we got here, we had a circuit breaker blow on this thing that I was un unaware of. And I ended up having to manually deploy the anchor when we got here. It was a bit of a kerfuffle, but we got it done. So I wanted to run through this entire process. The more times you run this at a nice calm, like in a marina where it's completely controlled situations, the more comfortable you'll be with these emergency procedures. And they're very important. All right, well, thank you so, so much for watching. And until next time, safe travels. Bye. Join us next time as Franny works through several ongoing issues with our currently installed water maker and contemplates replacing the water maker with a brand new Seawater Pro.